Hate is our listeners, love is blind. Season two, let's watch. I'm so glad we talked it out before we came here because coming into like this yeah. apartment with, I don't know, just feeling like really good about this. Right. So, yeah. I mean, obviously we have things to work on. Like I, I didn't realize I was stubborn. But like, yeah, you never did. I know. I never would have described myself no. as stuff. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I mean, that wouldn't be the word I would put to it. But I, they, you know, that's the word that they're identifying. And of course, we don't know her whole personality. So maybe there are other. There's another set of behaviors that would exhibit stubbornness. But it. One of the best things you can do in a relationship is take responsibility for your faults and what's annoying about you and just own it and say, I'm sorry for it. Uh, I didn't know that I did that. And it's kind of makes me cringe, but uh, I'm sorry. And you know, let, let's work on it together. Let's be on the same team as we work on my stubbornness. So, and you know, putting hands on and he is, he's not jumping down her throat. I think he could do a little bit better, but if, and maybe he will, I'm just like, hey, thanks for, you know, I, there, I still love you. And I'll, I love you even though you are stubborn, but you know, thanks for taking responsibility for that. But anyway, let's see how this goes. I'm 100% stubborn. I know you are, but like, I didn't realize I was. I was oblivious though. <laughs> so actually, so, and then he just took response. He's like, I'm 100% stubborn as well. Okay. What do they mean by that? Uh, I think what they mean is defended, honestly, but that's just my language. Now. I'm reminded now where we left off with them is he want, he walked off and said, I'm done. Get get me the F out of here. Because I think he was misinterpreting her around a conversation that they were having. And, and so they must have made up between then and now. Wait, what? did you know I was stubborn? Yeah, 100%. Oh. I can't say that though. You'd kill me. Like you say all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So this is great. I mean, it really couldn't get any better than this. Uh, we see a lot of couples who have, you know, issues as all couples do. And this is the kind of conversation that I'm always hoping that they'll have, not exactly like this per se, but that you can be playful and happy and affectionate and take responsibility, give each other feedback in a way that the other person can hear. It's good. Oh my God. Um. I think if we didn't like, you know, argue, yeah. it would be too good to be true. So mm -hmm. just <sighs> promise you'll never leave me. Of course, I would never leave you. Don't leave me. They're really a surprise couple to me. Uh, you know, when this whole thing got off the ground at, in the pods, it just didn't. See, I just didn't think that this was going to work out so well but it really is i mean just goes to show what what do you know from watching a show but they i mean who knows maybe by the end of this they'll come flying apart and shana will screw everything up but they seem like they're doing amazing they're both communicating really well they're putting a lot of effort into the relationship they clearly have chemistry and love for each other so you know kudos to them and my day with you is going to be like awesome yeah, coming with my best friend i know you're my best friend too. am i yeah. You're like everything I wanted. Seriously. I love you. So it's good. She, I think, as a lot of people do, has some shyness or insecurity, maybe particularly when the cameras are around, about being vulnerable and complimenting. She's clearly able to overcome that. And I, I, I think I see the gears in her mind turning of like, don't make a joke out of this. Be sincere, that's what he needs, and there's nothing wrong with that, and he's helping me to be more real and, and vulnerable, and she she did that, and then he responded well, so uh, uh, it's good. They, they, they listened to each other, they adjusted, and they're meeting each other's needs. Yeah, yeah horribly. Hey, what did she say? Jaina. She said that she basically called like us, our whole relationship a fraud. What? And just called out saying like, you guys are not compatible, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> Wait, what? Yeah, and good on Shane for telling Natalie what happened. I mean, Shane handled himself very well. He was nice. He didn't get wrapped up, didn't get triggered, didn't lower himself to Shane's level. 
he just listened and was nice and playful-ish and just, you know, was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> and, and then goes to Natalie and says, you're not going to believe what she said. Yeah, she was just calling you all the whole time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No way anyone thinks that. I don't know. Like, actually, I don't know. Like, it was like, what? Like, is there something else that I'm not missing? Or like, what here, I guess? I don't Am know. I I'm asking you that question because, like, I just don't know. I know I'm not calling you. I don't, I'm just wondering why she would say that. Yeah. All right. So Shane is like, why would you say that? And I'm asking Natalie, like, did you say something to Shana to make her believe that? I, yeah, I, I would be confused as well. <laughs> I am confused to some extent. So. I, I hope that Shane, Shane just realizes that it's just her wishful fantasy and it's a defense. So another thing I'll say about, you know, people that I've treated who have been like this is that when you feel rejected and you're not getting your needs met, you're going to be hurt. And we transfer our hurt into anger very frequently. And then we feel angry and we might not exactly know why. We might kind of have an inkling we're mad at a relationship. And then we might have a narrative as to why we're angry at that relationship. Like, oh, it must be fake. You know, it's, it's a fake relationship. You know. So, you know, maybe that's what happened. I'm just like, I've never yeah. talked to her about us, but only that we're really, really good. So that'd be crazy. It will be crazy. We were a fraud couple. Do you think we're a fraud couple? No, do you? No. I mean, like, they can call me whatever they want. But so good for them they are not being infiltrated by the idea they're checking in with each other did you say something do you think we're a fraud no i'm not we're not a fraud couple so it's good i love who he is and i know i want to be with like with who he is for the rest of my life should we just make sweet sweet love on the beach right now should we make babies or anything yeah so we're seeing a shift in he is bidding for love and affirmation and she responds in kind she is no longer i think insecure or unsure or something and is able to be vulnerable and respond with vulnerability and it enhances their relationship and i fell in love with someone and he proposed to me and I said, yes, yeah, so I'm engaged. Oh my God. <laughs> His name's Shane. This is like Shane in my apartment. What? Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, so as a Japanese American, I have a lot of Korean American friends throughout my life and Korean Americans are very diverse as are Japanese Americans, as are all Americans to some extent. So I'm not gonna say that I, can, I know what Natalie's family is like, but I will tell you about, generally speaking, not always the case, that Korean parents take parenting very, very seriously. Um, as, I mean, I guess that's a funny way to put it. Part of the, I mean, I guess all parents take their job really seriously, but Korean parents feel often, not always, that they are parents for the duration of your life. So you could have, you could be 60 years old and have an 80 year old mother and she feels like she's in charge of feeding you and making sure that you're safe and guiding you. So the way to think about it, and again, not all Korean families are like this, but when your 10 year old decides they don't wanna to go to school, you don't listen to them. You're just like, well, you're going to school. <laughs> so. You don't have a choice, you're 10. So, you know, we understand that, that we don't allow 10 year olds to make their own choice. Or if a 15 year old said, I'm gonna get married and move in with someone, you'd say, no, you're not. I don't care how good your relationship is. That's just not gonna happen. So with Korean parents, Korean American parents included, they often feel that responsibility and that entitlement throughout your life as an adult. And in some ways, you benefit from that because your parents, you could be 32 years old, 42 years old, your parents are extremely helpful. <laughs> they are concerned about you and you are a priority. 
They want to know what's going on and they will help you. They will, you know, sacrifice themselves. They'll work two jobs just to put you through grad school in your 30s, that kind of thing. So that's the pro. And you'll never go hungry and you'll never have to do your laundry if you don't want to, that kind of thing. On the dark side of the coin, you feel like you can't really do things independently because your parents always have an opinion and they're very skeptical, particularly who you marry, because that's a big deal for every family. But to let it, you know, letting someone into the family is a very careful affair. And there can be some race based conclusions about we want you to look for a proper Christian Korean boy, that kind of thing. A lot of Korean Americans are Christian, by the way. So, and they can be very, very Christian, like not just sort of Christian, like extremely dedicated Christians, Korean Americans. Now, I have no idea about Natalie and her family, but I wonder if we'll see this. Play. Now, as evidenced actually by the fact that Natalie has not even told her parents that she went on this show. The parents walked into this apartment and they're looking around and like, where are we? And I think she told them, look, I'm on a reality TV show and I just have an announcement to tell you, so don't mind the cameras. And they walk in and they're like, and she's like, this is my apartment. And they're like, it is? What is, it? What is happening right now? And she just explains, she's like, so I went on this thing, this experiment where they put 15 people together and now I'm engaged. <laughs> and so I think she didn't tell her parents that she was even doing this because she, I don't know, but I'm guessing she thought that the parents would actually forbid her from doing it or somehow create a scene or something. And to my Korean American brothers and sisters out there, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, not all Korean parents, but uh, I, I have Korean friends who fall in love with, say, a white American and they keep their relationship secret from their parents for years. And then when they get married, the parents won't even come to the wedding, not because, you know, the white American is a bad person, but just because they just don't approve. You know, they're just like, well, I just don't approve. And, and you're like, well, why don't you approve? It's just like, well, it's just not, I just feel a person isn't good enough for you. You know, that, that kind of thing. And so, you know, and on the plus plus side, there's a lot of attention, a lot of care, a lot of closeness, a lot of involvement. On the downside, there can be that. But I don't know. Let's see what, and, and I will say as a Japanese American, we have our own things. We have our own coin, you know, the good side and the bad side. And it sometimes does actually kind of involve this, just not as much as my Korean friends. It's like too, too much. So we're getting married in two weeks. What? I'm concerned. As a mom. So am I. Do you want to see the ring? Now, to some extent, it they she kind of set up her parents because she didn't prepare them. She she just springs it on them like I'm engaged, and they have to now catch up. So to some extent, that's expected. But let's see how they do. No, I don't want to see it. Ten days. How about you and Haimuni got married after three days? They were married what, 60, 70? I know. So, I, do you live in you know, in that nineteen sixties? I would have not said yes if I like truly did not think it was a right decision. Don't know. I and Natalie's doing really well. She's just you know sticking to her guns and saying, you know, doing all the things she's supposed to. And the dad's just like, <laughs> and the mom's the one that's you know having all the objections. So. I mean, on the scale of things, I would say, regardless of ethnicity, parents are going to have this reaction because it's just normal. You're like, wait, what? You just met this person. You're getting married in a couple of weeks. Like, how is that responsible? So there's nothing particularly Korean about her reaction at this point. But anyway. Truly, I wanted to tell you guys, but like, I just wanted you to like meet him in person before you make any judgment. But yeah. like, mom, he's exactly like you, like wow. high energy, <laughs> like very, sometimes a little bit emotional. You know what? I will give you the heads up personality wise. Okay, interesting. So we're learning that Natalie's mom, according to Natalie, is just like Shane. Extroverted, I'm guessing, and some, you know, emotional. So... Sometimes we do marry our parents. 
things? Like, what made you think that he was the one? Like, just based on our conversations in the pods, like, we just talked just, like, deep, like, who you are. Like, you, we, you just, like, talk about everything. And he's, like, very, very kind. That's good. That's good. He's great. Okay. Yeah. I believe I'm you. I'm sure I, he's, he's... I, I want to meet him. I'm okay. So the dad's being super flexible, really nice. And I think the mom is flexible. I think it's just, it's just shocking, right? So it makes sense. My parents and I are very, very close. Well, I have to pick sides. My parents are Shane. I don't know. I haven't thought that far. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to put on lipstick. She does a lot of a crazy thing, but this is too much for me. So the mom is saying she does a lot of crazy things, but this, it kind of makes me wonder if they know the cameras are there because the cameras are kind of behind things. Do They seem to be talking as if the cameras aren't there. They have to know the cameras are there, right? I mean, certainly they would be told later and have to sign a d disclaimer and all that. But anyway, so they're about to meet Shane. I'm guessing he's going to win him over, I think. So Shane, now I'm going to grill you. Let's do it. Okay. I'm ready. So you're going to let him finish his meal? Uh, no, no, let's go. I think so what made her stand out? She made like a point every single time to like give me a reassurance and like say like, you're my number one person, number one person. Like a lot of people are always so hesitant and afraid to like say. Well, he's consistent that he really wants people to make him feel safe through reassurance and compliments. So his first response, you know, what made Natalie stand out was she, she always was there reassuring me that I was her number one, that I was her number one. So, you know, it's interesting. At first I thought, well, that's not necessarily the basis for but I would say genuine attraction to an, an individual. You know, you're attracted to someone who builds up your ego. You're, you're attracted to building up your ego. But as time goes, has gone on, I think it, it, there's a lot of evidence pointing to that he genuinely likes Natalie in particular because of the way she, that she is. So, you know, but it is interesting that he's consistent in his response here. Yeah. Well, she has that side that nobody sees. <laughs> Only I know. What, what side is that, Mom? Yeah, I like to see this side. So, when she was young, yes. the only time that I knew that she was mad was when she goes like, like this in front of me. <laughs> that means she's mad. Like, I keep in my anger and then I let it go. All right, interesting. So, the mom is saying when she was young, the only way you could tell she was angry was this this movement that she would do. And then Natalie says, I keep in my anger and then I let it go. Now, I don't know, but that sometimes can lead to what we call passive aggressive personality or dependent personality. It's not usually understood by the label on the internet, but essentially what it, I don't know about Natalie. She doesn't, I mean, the word stubborn actually gets applied to people who are passive aggressive personality disorder. And uh, so, but I don't really see much signs of it with her. And I, you know, it, it would be hard to see signs of this because it's just a reality show. But I'll tell you, I'll talk about it for a sec here. Is that when you're a child and you're, you feel like you can't express your anger for whatever reason, you will suppress it, but you still feel it. And kind of, it's still there. And there, depending on how bad it is for you, you might like, completely suppress it or just halfway suppress it. And what happens is that you're still angry and you have a, a fair amount of resentment and rage that never gets expressed at all. But I mean, directly, but you'd still need to express it. So people will express it passively, passive aggressively, meaning hidden hostility. You will, you'll get back at people in a hidden way because you know you can't express your, you feel like you can't express your anger directly. So if a parent, for example, says you have to go to bed now, it's your bedtime, and you are upset about that, you're angry about it. If you're allowed to be angry, you'll huff and, you know, pout. I don't want to go to bed. You'll say that, you know, every parent has seen that face. But if the child doesn't feel safe enough to express their anger, then they'll, they'll say, okay, I'll go to bed. But hidden underneath everything is anger about it, which is natural to have. And then the kid will stay up all night or will, um, I don't know, sneak out of the room in the middle of the night or so, I don't know. There's a, or um, 
take mom's purse and throw it in the bathtub or something. You know, there's just various different ways you can get back. And the most um, insidious of behaviors is when the recipient of the attack doesn't even know that it's from you or doesn't even know that you're angry to the point where I, I've worked with people who will express their passive aggressiveness by breaking into computers or breaking into someone's house and you know just rummaging around not even really doing not destroying anything just just you know rummaging through their drawers or lo looking at their computer files and then and then logging out and, and walking away and it feels good to them because it's like i invaded their space and it feels somehow compelling and somehow safer to me that i did that but the person never even found out about it. So it's so hidden that it's so passive in terms of aggression that the recipient doesn't even, didn't even know it happened. So, and that's kind of an extreme example, but you know, that's an example of it. And sometimes these individuals can be described as stubborn because that's another passive way of expressing anger is just to, you know, become a mule and say, I'm not gonna move. Like, you know, you can't make me and it can come across in ways that seem completely disjointed to the situation. Like someone will just dig their heels in on something. Like if you're if you're in a relationship with a passive aggressive personality in, in, individual, you'll notice that they'll dig their heels in on things where you're just like, why are you digging your heels in on that? Like, it's so unreasonable. You're just destroying our life. Like you're so rigid around this thing. And it's because they're expressing a lifetime of anger through rigidity and they they don't they feel like it's in their insides they're like this is the last straw i am not gonna budge on this i've budged in every other aspect of my life and i'm not gonna budge here but they pick things that don't make a lot of logical sense to themselves so i don't know about now i don't really see any signs of that actually well one passive aggressive or hidden hostility that you can express is through making fun of someone in a joking way, right? And we did see that. So, you know, uh, and now we're hearing from the mom that, you know, she didn't express anger when she was growing up. So that's, that's interesting. Are I'm you happy. happy it's him? Yes, I am. I'm, I am. I am. For some reason, I am. I think. I mean, you can tell. He's very, he's very, he's, you know, genuine, genuine and caring person that. I know it's quick, but we can keep hanging out and I promise you we will show you that we're ready. <laughs> yeah, Shane is extremely comfortable in his own skin, saying all the right things, genuine things, and you know, the parents are adjusting and so they're being flexible. I, I mean, I have seen scenarios with some of my friends where the parents will, to the day they die, just refuse to accept a situation like this that they weren't involved in. So the parents are being extremely cool and flexible, which reflects on their maturity and love of their daughter. I'm absolutely ready for it. 100% mm. I am. I am. It sounds crazy, but like, I just know her. I just feel like I've known her for years now. I feel a lot comfortable mm -hmm. now that I met you yeah. because I came in here without the expectation. Yes. So now I met you. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.